Having used Studio One for well over a decade at this point, it's easy for me to forget that every day somebody is starting Studio One for the very first time. So I want to create some content around here for you, if that's you. If you're just getting started and you're thinking, okay, what are the... If, if, if I only had 10 minutes to sit with you at a computer and say, hey, here are kind of the basics you need to know about Studio One just to get rolling, to get the ball rolling, these are some of the things that I would show you. So today I want to do that with regard to specifically drag and drop, which is really a core feature of Studio One, has been since the very beginning. I remember I was working for a, an audio manufacturer or an audio dealer when Studio One first came out. So some of the folks from Personas came to introduce Studio One to us, and we were pretty skeptical. Uh, I was a Pro Tools guy at the time, didn't have any, didn't feel any need to switch or change software. But one of the features they showed us was the drag and drop functionality. And I remember thinking, oh, that's cute, but uh, we professionals don't use drag and drop. I was wrong. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So what do I mean by drag and drop? So one of the easiest ways to show that is, let's say I want to put uh, a plug-in on this base DI track here, this red track here. How would you do that in a typical system? Let's say, for example, in Pro Tools, the way I would do it, I would click a button up here, I would go through the list of plugins like this, or perhaps they were done by folders, type of plugin, I would open up the EQ plugin, I would select Pro EQ, now we've got our EQ on there, right? And I would repeat that process over and over for whatever I wanted to add. Studio One has a different approach. You can still do it that way, of course. You can actually do that a number of ways. But the way that I first started using when I started using Studio One, and I still do to this day, is this. There's a window over here. When I press F7 on the keyboard, it opens up this window on the right-hand side. And you can have a number of things here, but the one I leave it set to for 99% of the time is the effects window, which is the plugins window. And I've got it set to sort them by vendor, um, and I primarily just use the Personas plugin, so here they are in alphabetical order. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, you can make these look different by clicking this button up here. If you want just a list of plugins by name, that's fine. Uh, they default to this, which gives you a visual of what the plugin looks like. So if that grabs your attention more, that's great. I tend to go this route just so I can see more in one view without having to do much scrolling, uh, but you do, you do you, okay? So if I wanted to put an EQ on this particular channel, I just drag it right there. Now you may think, is that any faster? Well, with a nice wide screen, I keep this open all the time, and I have it fairly small so it doesn't take up a ton of real estate, but I can quickly add this whenever I want. Also, I can do it when I'm looking at the individual tracks inside the arrange window. So F3 opens up my mixer. Mixer's great, I love a mixer, but sometimes you're working on a track and you say, man, this uh, this stairwell track, which literally was a microphone in the stairwell while we tracked drums. If you're curious, it sounds like this. <laughs> sounds like a stairwell. Um, but like I say, mm, I need to put an EQ on that. In other systems, you might say, okay, cool, I've got to either press maybe F3 to open up the mixer, and then I can add the plug in there, or I press F4, which opens up this kind of side view, which shows me kind of a bunch of information for that single track, and I can add the plug in there. Or I could simply just drag the EQ onto it. Just like that, it added an EQ to this track. And I can actually see up here at the top, I actually already have an EQ plug in on this track. Um, so I added a second one, but it, assuming I was at the very beginning, I hadn't EQ'd anything, I can just add them like that. Or I say, you know what? It really needs, um, a compressor. I can just drag the compressor right here onto the track. It opens it up. I can tweak it. I can close it and I'm off to the races. I could do a huge chunk of my mixing without having to open the mixer. That's what's cool about drag and drop. Here's my favorite thing. If you have used uh, reverb sends before inside of any other system, you know that it involves a couple of steps. Let's say I want to put a room reverb on this drum bus. How would I do that? Historically, the way you do that is you create some sort of an aux track or a bus track or an effects channel. You create that. You name it. You add a reverb plugin to that. You come back to the original track. You add a send, and then you select the appropriate bus to send that to, and then you now have reverb on that. How many steps with that? Several, right? Check out how fast it is in Studio One. First, I come over here, I check out the Room Reverb plugin. I can even expand it to see exactly which preset I want. Let's say I want to go for Medium Studio. I like that one for drums, by the way. I click that preset. Now I'm dragging it, okay? And I'm going to hold it over the send section on this drum bus. So all my drums are going through this bus and I'm gonna let go, check out what happens. 
Soon as I let go, a whole bunch of things happened in the blink of an eye. This reverb plugin opened up, but also it created this bus, this effects channel that has the reverb preset that I chose on it. It has named this Room Reverb. It has added the send and turned it up about halfway, and I can immediately hear that there is reverb on my drums. I've added, that was a terrible spot to show you that, but you get the idea. I've added room reverb to my drums with one drag and drop. That did, how many steps? It created the effects send, it added a plugin to it, it chose the right preset for that plugin, it named the effects send, the name of the plugin, which is 99 times out of 100 what you want it to be named anyway, it added a send on the original channel and sent it to the right place. So it's at least five or six steps that it did all in one. This is when you start to realize, oh man, it's not just, uh, it's not a gimmick of like, oh, drag and drop. I like to use my keyboard. I don't like to like drag. Th Trust me, it is an efficiency thing. It's actually faster than trying to do things any other way. Going through menus. I don't go through menus almost ever anymore because I can just drag things and put them where I want to go. Here's another one. Let's say you've got a bunch of, of background vocals. Uh, hang on one second. Let me, uh, yeah. Let's just say you have a bunch of background vocals and I want to select... Uh, I've got all of these, you know, I want to select every other background vocal and adjust the panning. Well, guess what? I can just select these by holding down control or command on the Mac, control on the PC. Now they're all selected. Now guess what? I can do a number of things to all of these just by selecting them. I can adjust their panning. Check that out. I'm panning, what is that, eight tracks at a time. I can adjust the up and down. I can adjust the faders on them. These two are grouped, which is why that one is moving. I can solo these. I can mute them. I can record enable them if I want. I could add a plugin to all of them if I want. I could add that reverb send if I want. Let's add a send it to the room reverb. By just selecting all of them, like literally just clicking, holding down command, and selecting a certain number of tracks, I can then do things to those tracks all at once without creating a group. If you've used other systems, you know that to do something like that, you've got to select the tracks you want. You've got to right click. You've got to group the tracks together. Sometimes you have to name the group. Then you have to enable the group, do the thing you want to do to the group, and then disable the group. We still have that in Studio One if that's the way you want to work. This way is faster. If I come over here to uh, these guitar tracks and I'm like, mm, these guitars need to go down. I just select them and pull them down. That's it. I don't have to create a group for them first and then group them and then turn the group on and then turn them down. I just select them and turn them down. And I say, these two need to turn up. Bam. That's it. If I say, you know, I want to send these tracks to a different output, I just select them and I just do it. I don't have to group anything. I don't have to remember specific weird key combinations that give me carpal tunnel. I just have to just click on things and do it. There are probably 20 more examples of drag and drop. One that just came to mind is if I want to put a plug in on this specific event, like this specific chunk of audio, I can. Let's say I want to put a rotor plug in just on this event. I can hold down Option on the Mac, which is uh, Alt on the PC, and I can add an effect, and it's adding it just to this piece of audio. It's not on the actual organ track. We can see here, I didn't add a rotor plug-in there. I added a rotor plug-in just to this chunk of audio using something called Event Effects. So this one section of this organ, that's actually well-timed, will have the rotor effect on it. <laughs> That was a terrible, terrible spot to pick, but you get the idea. We added an effect just to that spot, so that's handy for one-off telephone effects or distortion effects or the delay effect that you just want to be on one specific piece of audio. Those are just a handful of examples where drag and drop makes your life easier from a productivity and efficiency standpoint. It's stuff like this that won me over to Studio One all those years ago. I started using Studio One long before I ever made any content for Personas uh, because it just won me over. It just was sneaky, kept making my life easier, and I thought, man, I can get this stuff done in half the time because of all those little things that Studio One does that makes my life easier. And these are core features that have been around since the beginning. I'll tell you, the, the developers that make Studio One, wonderful people over in Hamburg, Germany, they don't. They hate it when I do a demo and I only show features that were there from the very beginning because they're excited, understandably so, about all the new features like Atmos mixing and things like that. That's all wonderful and necessary and good, but 
really what wins people over, especially if they're using another DAW and they're frustrated with those workflows, are these wonderful features that have been, been there since the beginning. So yeah, let's keep developing and improving Studio One, of course, but don't forget all the great core features that make it the, my DAW of choice for at least the last decade. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.